Hey guys, EST here with another great video, and it finally happened. Society has collapsed. We were so busy focusing on the apes taking over that we took our focus off the Canadian geese, who are now the ruling species on this planet. But don't worry, I'm in here in my garage with a propane heater, obviously a carbon monoxide detector, and these two cans of tomato sauce and tomato paste. But no can opener. What should I do? Well, use a trick that I heard about on the internet, right? Of course I've never tried it though, and that's why we're trying it in this video, because a couple things seemed a little suspect when I heard people talk about this. It seems to be like one of those prepper things where everybody says it, but nobody's actually tried to see if it actually works. And my gosh, are there a lot of myths going around. And we're either going to confirm it or bust it. So, uh, these are insanely difficult to open because, I mean, it's super thick. Uh, if you try, like, an ice pick or something, you probably get through it. But it'll just geyser. I mean, they're under pressure. I purposely didn't look it up, though, because I didn't want to know the answer. I wanted to try it for myself and make any mistakes. I I'm literally just like, hey, let's do a dry run of this before I need to do it to see if it really works and to see if I make a mistake based on basically the one sentence, which is rub the can on concrete. So that's... All I have to go off of, not, oh, here's an optimal way to do it. But I do have a, a good idea of how, like, friction and abrasives work. Now, I will say, look at that lip. That That is insane. To grind through this with just manual, you know, scraping it on there, that's going to be a nightmare. But I did bring this one, which is equally bad, except on the bottom. Now, I've heard you want to look for one like this. Well, what if you don't have a can like this? Which is why I brought both. And this one's smaller. What if it's bigger? What if it's enormous? What if it's five gallon? I mean, that'd be a lot of beans. You could be looking at 5,000 calories. So uh, I think I could grind this off pretty easily, but then will I get chunks of concrete and metal bits in my food? So uh, we're just going to see if this works at all, how much effort it takes, if it takes like an hour, in which case I may be burning 200 calories doing this nonstop for an hour, not to mention, you know, time. We're going to see how noisy it is. Everything. We're checking everything. So let's just jump into it. So I'm going to set a timer. Ta-da! Stopwatch. I'm going to leave that going. And uh, let's just start grinding. Now I brought this one that's uh, kind of coarse, you know, it's a cinder block. And then this one, which is like a poured concrete block. So this is more like what I would think the average driveway would be. Or uh, a highway, an overpass, you know, any kind of concrete structure really should be closer to this. And this is a little finer. I think this is a little too bumpy. So uh, I think I'll try this, but I'm probably going to move to this pretty quickly. So with the magic of editing, you don't have to sit here watching. So let's fast forward. I found problem number one. My table isn't stable. Of course, you would never use a table. You'd be using the ground. So let me fix that. Okay, didn't think we'd fail that quick, but uh, I'll just put the timer up here and I'll just show it to you. But uh, yeah, that was just because, you know, this isn't actually attached to a road. So mulligan, let's go. Okay, I noticed right away this is putting off some kind of either concrete or metal vapors or both, like dust into the air. So I'm going to have to go get a breather. And that's, uh, that's an issue. Now in the open air, fine, but then people could spot you from a distance. But then again, where would you have a road that's indoors? <laughs> I don't know, parking garage maybe? That's probably where I should have done this. But I didn't want to destroy my own you know, driveway or somebody's parking garage. <laughs> so a lot of these problems are just coming up because of how I'm filming the video. Oh, <laughs> I thought I'd try this first, but wow. I'm just ripping chunks off of this, but you never know. Let's power through it, see what happens. I mean, we're getting a little, you know, good scrape going. Oh my. Well, no dust, so, okay. Okay, that is way, way, way too hard on my hand. It's just like, every time it hangs up on something, it's just nuts, it would take so much more energy and I don't think it's as productive. Plus, I need an even friction. So that's a problem. Um, it, it's just too coarse, like I'm denting it right here. Uh, so no, we need it to be as fine as possible. So this doesn't throw up dust, but wow, I'm chucking rocks everywhere. All right, reset the timer. I've got an M9, or N95 mask. Now the experiment can start with earnest. <laughs> Well, I'm making progress. It's only been a minute and a half, but my arm's getting sore because I was going a little bit too fast. Uh, slow and steady wins the race because if I were to go you know, about this fast or double the speed, it actually doesn't take double the energy. It takes four times the energy. That's just how energy and acceleration work. But I can see I'm definitely making progress. This is uh, really eating away at it. So remember, this is the easy mode one with like the uh, dented flat ridge, I guess you would say. 
But maybe it would go faster on a rim. Who knows? We'll try that next. Well, this is already starting to really hurt my hand, actually, just to grip it that tight. And then the constant rumbling. It's really starting to get to me, which is weird because I have really strong, tough hands. So, uh, all right, we're going with the glove then. Only about four minutes in, and uh, man, the muscle fatigue. And remember, I got plenty of sleep last night. I ate breakfast. I'm all healthy and set to go, and this is already tiring me out. I'm fairly in shape, too, especially my arms, so... Wow. I guess instead of, like, leaning forward in a crappy folding chair, I'll actually, like, change up my form, see if we can find something a little bit more efficient. Oh, wait. I think we see something right here. That looks like something wet. What do we got? Um, yeah, I think we've got a slight fracture right there. Now, here's the problem. I'm going this side down and there's gravity, so... How is that going to work? Which was another concern, but, uh... Well, I'm already prepared for this to be a complete messy disaster, so let's go. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> That's definitely tomato sauce. Oh, boy. So, well, now what do I do? It, it's, if I keep going, it's just all going to leak out. Huh. This might be the point where you, uh, you broke the seal. You don't want to get any more grit and particles in it, so you would jab it with a screwdriver or just like a knife. I guess I can try that. So I got a screwdriver because uh, you're more likely to find this just in the average whatever, house, garage, you know, commercial area, than a can opener. I think even in people's houses, it would be kind of hard to find it. Well, let's just say more likely to find an electric one. Which would be a problem if, if the electricity's up. And maybe you just took these and run and now you're in the middle of the uh, woods. Well, now you're in trouble. But if you don't have a knife, you're in trouble for other reasons. So this is my crappiest Chinese garbage knife that I got for like $11. But it's really thick and really sturdy. So uh, let's start with that because you're more likely to have it. Let's see if I can even get it in here. Oh, this is, this is dangerous. Oh! Yep. A <laughs> little bit of splash. A little bit. Um... That barely even got in my jacket. That wasn't too bad. So I think I've now broken it. Okay. Okay, so there you can see I made a weakness here. Let me just clean up real quick, sorry. Wow, some of that made it about two feet onto my chair. It did get kind of a little bit all over my new jacket. So not thrilled about that. Now I smell like food, I'm cold and wet, and that's just not something you want to happen in a survival situation. Okay, after a very extensive cleanup, <laughs> Oh, boy. I mean, it would have been worse if I didn't weaken it. That already had a little bit of an air hole in it, and still the punch just geysered it. So it would have been way worse if I just took a screwdriver and jammed it. I guarantee it. It would have basically turned into a tomato bomb. So a couple metal scraps might fall in, which is a problem. But let's see, instead of the lid going down, if I can get it to go up. And I'm just pretending that this is my knife. So let's see. Oh, look at that. That easy. Oh, my God. Why did I choose tomato sauce? What about that seemed like a good idea? Boy, every single time this metal does anything, it just goes nuts. Um, so if you can, handkerchief, paper towels, whatever you got, cover it, I guess, or do, do this. <laughs> this is a load of laundry by itself right here. This is a brand new shirt. Leave a like if you appreciate the uh, things I go through for this channel. <sighs> I think we've established that this works, but what the hell. All right. It occurs to me that I could have just covered this with a scrap piece of uh, cloth and then just stabbed it. That would have prevented most of the geysering. Yeah, considering the, the six minutes it took to do this or whatever, I, I'm not feeling it. And uh, I know you guys are going to make me do the one with the rim just to see how quickly I can get it down. I won't actually open it, but I'll just see if it takes like 10 minutes to grind it. Okay, whatever. It's it's open. There we go. You know I could pry it. I just don't want to get more, more covered. Ooh, whoops. All right, you know what? I'm just going to grab it here. Of course, this is just jagged as hell, so be careful. Also, like, don't try this at home unless it's an emergency. In fact, if you're at home, just buy a... There we go. <laughs> buy a can opener. All right, okay, so let me inspect this really closely. Yeah, all I see is oregano. That's pretty clean. I, I don't see any chunks of metal. I mean, there might be a couple little tiny ones, but I think I ple uh, cleaned that pretty good. And uh, I don't see any concrete dust either, so... Mission accomplished, I guess. So it is possible. It's just still kind of messy. I maybe could have done that a little bit better, but I think as soon as you see it leaking, 
then now let's say it wasn't tomato sauce. Let's say it was uh, beans without sauce, like green beans. I don't know why you'd bother. They're about 70 calories a can. But if it's not like an absolute tight packed sauce, um, you could just drain out the liquid, even though that's calories, and then just eat the remaining food. Now this could be like a, like a beef or like a spam where it's more solid and then it wouldn't splash, but I mean, I still wouldn't take a hammer to it. It would, you know, a hammer to a can of spam, boy, but a lot of those are uh, pop tops now. But I think if it's not a liquid, you could probably just open it with like a blunt rock, just pound on it, pound on it, pound on it until you create a hole, jam your knife in it and just go. Or just jam your knife in it in the first place. Okay, I already regret this. Let's go. Okay, let's examine it. That was about a minute and a half to two minutes. It is hard, hard, fast grinding right there. Um, not even close. Also, not level. Boy. Yeah, this, the, the normal type of cans would really be something. Yeah, I'm making almost no progress. I estimate that I would probably be here for at least 10 minutes, probably upwards of 20, trying to grind that rim off. And uh, it would hit that inner lip. You see that right there? It would hit that lip on the inside. Oh, man, I'm actually tired from doing this. But yeah, it would start hitting that before it gets this to the edge, I think. And then, let's say that this unevenness, uh, just because of muscles or the direction, I mean, you'd, you'd want to keep rotating, obviously, but there's only so much you can do. I think that would result in uh, not being able to peel it. Now, the other one, it was really easy because I made the weakness everywhere because it already kind of was a weak design. But this, it's like crimped together. I think if I got this side down and this was still sealed, I wouldn't be able to peel it. Or even just like like these three sides would be better and then this would get through and then I wouldn't be able to peel it past here because this would still be an extremely strong point. So I'm going to call this busted. I, I don't think this is reasonable. If you had absolutely no other choice, it is technically possible but there's so much wrong with it. Well, let me put it this way. They make little teeny tiny compact military can openers. They're like an inch or two and that's it. And I think a lot of them, uh, they have a blade on them. Okay, cool. I don't like blade style ones. I like like crimp ones that uh, have the two wheels that pinch in. Those are just better. And yeah, okay, those are kind of big, but those little tiny military ones, um, you can buy them in bulk. Everybody has them. Um, uh, there's some brand new Chinese made ones, but I would get like the American made, you know, like Vietnam ones, like actual reputable military surplus. Although make sure they're not rusty, obviously. They might be stainless though. I don't know, but um, uh, carry one of those around everywhere. I mean, have one in your car, have one in your backpack, have one in your go bag, just so that, you know, you'd always have it. Now, the other thing is, well, what if you just don't want to mess with um, canned goods? I mean, you'd be insane to put like, you know, eight canned goods in your backpack or something. And then not put in a can opener, just put in a can opener. But I guess the scenario here is you're, you're scavenging because, I don't know, you were in a sub-basement playing laser tag or something, and then a gamma burst happened or some radiation, I don't know, and everybody on the surface died, but 5% of humans are still alive. Okay, well, you're going house to house, justifiably so, because, you know, they're not going to use it. And you're finding canned goods, but you're not finding can openers. I, I find that to be just such an odd scenario that I'm wondering why people are like, hey, hot prepper tip, you can open a can by grinding it on concrete. First of all, it's almost impossible. Second, it's almost as messy as just banging on it with a knife. And third, when would you possibly be in this scenario? So overall, all things considered, it's like an eight layer lasagna myth, okay? It's just myth upon myth upon myth upon useless information upon people never trying this and just it's not practical. It is possible, you can see I did it, but there's so many factors, it, it's almost not even worth making a video on, but I like busting myths, so I'm definitely gonna edit this and upload it, and now you know too. So if you know any tricks, like uh, I thought I heard somebody say, like put it on its side and then get like a rock and then put your knife right there and try and like rip this off. I don't think it works that way because I think that's a crimped edge, not an attached piece, but uh, I don't know if you know any good ways to open this without a can opener, I guess leave them down below or don't bother because you would never need to do this. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next video.